All right, so uh, in the last uh, uh, lecture, I talked about um, pathologic fractures, both metastatic disease, primary bone tumors, uh, very little bit, and uh, we kind of talked a lot about hip fractures, right, especially uh, femoral neck, intertrochanteric fractures. I think you all should be very familiar with them. Um, of course, prevention is uh, key, but uh, you can't prevent all of them, and with our growing uh, uh, older segment of the population, we're going to see more and more of these. And uh, they're, you know, patients with hip fractures. It's a tough go. I mean, if you have an older patient that medical problems. Now they have this disabling problem. Even though we go in and fix them, it's very hard to get back functioning um, with uh, hip fracture in the elderly. So um, it's a tough problem. So what about when fractures don't even heal? Right, and it's worth talking about this a little bit. Well, a fractured nonunion occurs when a fracture doesn't heal. So remember what's needed for fracture healing, right? It's cells, extracellular matrix, blood supply, uh, molecules, growth factors, and mechanical stability. And these are slides actually from the second year uh, block lecture. So you probably don't remember that, but I'm refreshing your memory. Um, so th those are the things needed for fracture healing. And of course here you can see there's a fracture that didn't heal, right? This, I'll show this slide again in, in a couple of slides. So there's a history of pain. Of course they're going to tell you that they just haven't gotten better. They still hurt. They still have pain. Uh, on examination they're going to have tenderness directly over the fracture non-union site. Um, and on x-rays there's going to be a persistent fracture line seen. So the thing is, like, if patients are just, they're still having pain and you're not sure why. I mean, you can't just say everybody's got a non-union. Um, maybe the fractures, you know, and if it's progressive Ill healing, it just needs time. Or um, if it looks healed and they're having pain, well, it's probably healed. Uh, or if they're not healed yet and the pain is coming from somewhere else, um, maybe it's not, you know, the, 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 the fracture site that's hurting and it's something else or there's an infection. Um, so usually they should be, they should still be painful at the area of the fracture, I, I think, if you're concerned that it's a non-union. So there's kind of two ways I think, you know, you can think about this. One is atrophic non-union, which is lack of biologic requirements, no bone being made, uh, needs bone grafting. So here you can see an example um, where um, there's no being made, I'm sorry, no bone being made in this little gap here. Um, this maybe was an open fracture, this sort of stripped and put all these cables in here, and that little area just didn't heal. Uh, as opposed to um, the hypertrophic nonunion, right? So here there's lack of mechanical stability, um, lots of bone, I mean maybe not a ton of bone here, um, but um, you can see there's bone being made, uh, bone being made here, lots of bone being made here, um, uh, but um, the fracture doesn't heal, right? There's just too much motion. So you even, so it's interestingly, the fracture line, right? So if you were to say that uh, this is, you know, the normal bone maybe was there, well, I don't know, maybe that's a little bit too, maybe that's a little too much, maybe it was more like here, right? right this is clearly callus bone out here. Well, where's the fracture line? The fracture should have ended here. But the fracture actually extends into the callus, Right, so when you see that, that's probably because there's too much motion. So it's making bone, making bone, making bone, but it just doesn't bridge because, uh, you know, it doesn't bridge across, doesn't bridge this across because there's just too much motion, you know, going this way and maybe this way or, or whatever and it just can't heal. Maybe it's going this way and this way, but it just can't bridge across, right? So it needs better stability, um, better, stronger fixation perhaps. So, one reason for a non-union, you know, the atrophic type is lack of extracellular matrix, right? So a large defect, I mean, this is a massive example, look at this, but a large defect won't heal uh, because just no matrix to, for new bone to form on top of. Here you can, you can do bone grafting, give it a scaffold for bone to grow onto. Maybe there's a lack of growth factors. Hard to diagnose this. Uh, here you can see maybe there's a little bit of bone, but you can see the plate's coming loose. Perhaps there's like this lucency here. Some bone formation, but quite a gap. Um, 
and again, I don't think you can say that's due to lack of growth factors because it's hard to, to diagnose those, but lack of growth factors is a reason for some fractures not to heal and it can be administered to fracture non-unions in the form of treatment. Uh, or if you put bone graft, you're not only putting a scaffold, but you're putting bone morphogenetic proteins, you're putting uh, growth factors that can help uh, stimulate bone formation. What about poor vascular supply? Well, atrophic non-unions can occur in smokers, diabetics, patients who've had vascular injury, and in these cases, certainly vascularized bone and soft tissue transplants, or so-called flaps, can help. And, um, you know, when you have a case like this where the intramedullary supply has been cut off, I mean, uh, you can see you know, the cortex come down here, you have the cortex come down here, it almost looks as a cortex here, right? So the, the medullary canal in here is, you know, shut off. And uh, if you can break through this and uh, reestablish the medullary supply, that could also help. Uh, and that's one of the things we may do during surgery. And going back to the example I showed before, different case, uh, same type of concept as the hypertrophic nonunion, right? Lack of mechanical stability. So here's, you know, look at this, tons of bone, sorry, tons of bone being formed out here and out here. You know, the normal outline of the bone was probably there. Uh, lots of callus out here, but you can see there's just this fracture line that just goes all the way through and it's still there. It needs to be stabilized, right? The biology is there, but bone can't bridge across the fracture site due to the motion. So it needs stabilization, doesn't need bone graft. You just go in and fix this and it's going to heal. So we'll finish off on just a few, real few slides on just casting, splinting principles. This is stuff you kind of have to see, um, you know, a little bit more to, to get an appreciation, get your hands on it, uh, and some basic internal fixation principles, which also you kind of have to see in the OR. Um, real basic stuff, paddle, bony prominences, you know, whenever you put a cast or splint on someone, allow for swelling, you know, and remember if you put a cast on, you can't really allow for swelling. You tell them to elevate the leg, you know, watch for skin changes, but um, you know, all you can see is the tip of the toes or the tip of the fingers, really, when, you, when you're casting people. Um, you need adequate analgesia if, uh, if you're going to do a closed reduction, maybe even muscle relaxation, uh, if you're going to try to set a fracture or dislocation back in place. You know, if you're going to uh, do a nice three-point, I'm sorry, a nice closed reduction, you need a three-point mold, right? So you kind of see there's this, um, you know, force here, and then there's the force here, and the force here, so it's like three points to sort of um, allow this thing to stabilize, and if you remove one of the forces, like in this example, the reduction is lost. So, like when you put a, when you put this patient in a cast, you wrap a cast, you know, around here, you're going to have to sort of uh, push a hand here, push a hand here, and push something else here. Sometimes it's your knee, for instance, you know, some people use the side of their head, believe it or not. But whatever, you need three points to, to sort of get that cast molded properly or splint. So casting is it's, it's very technique dependent. Some people do it well, and some people just don't. And it's, if you, you're not going to get good results if you don't. <coughs> um, you know, there's lots of things that uh, you have to be careful with here. Here, you know, this cast ends right near the perineal neck. You have to make sure. You know, you pad this area really, really well, right, because you have the common perineal nerve coming right around there, and you don't want to get a get a foot drop. Uh, you want to sort of uh, keep the uh, foot in, uh, like, 90 degrees, right? Um, this is, you know, a little bit of perspective in the drawing here, but you want sort of 90 degrees, uh, you know, you don't want the foot in too much equinus. You want to have the toes free here, um, and you want a nice molded cast. This can be done with plaster or fiberglass. Now, certainly operative treatment, you think about having more complications, but you can get complications in a cast, right? Loss of reduction, pressure necrosis, you know, if you inadequately pad it over a bony prominence, this, this can happen really fast. You take the cast off a month later and there's like this big, huge hole in the skin, you know, and you're looking at bone now or something. I mean, that's, you just don't want that. Um, compartment syndrome, right? You know doesn't allow swelling. Patient who doesn't know what's going on, can't communicate whatever, uh, having, you know, they can't tell you they're having pain and now they have a compartment syndrome, nobody knew it, now the muscle's dead, right? Thermal necrosis, right? So keep in mind, casts, when they 
are turning hard, they get hot. So again, if you're not padded well, you can get a problem. And also cast removal. People often don't get cut with the cast saws, but the you, you can get burned, right? So those things, those blades get really hot. And if a patient's feeling something, you got to stop, you know, and listen to them. And uh, if you're not careful, you can get a burn. And those burns, they're, they're permanent scars. So you do that to a little kid, they're always going to have that scar. Last couple of words on basic internal fixation principles. Real few words here, just a couple of minor things. Bones heal well with compression techniques. You know, um, they certainly can heal uh, with other techniques. Also, here's just an example of a compression technique where uh, you can see there's this uh, plate and screws on the bone, and then something called a lag screw where you do interfragmentary compression across a fracture site using you know, special techniques. Um, but you can also heal with uh, relative stability. Like we show you examples of that, right? Intramedullary nailing, for instance. And uh, here you can see some errors, right? So hopefully once you start seeing some surgeries and maybe some of the slides during this talk uh, have showed you that um, you know stability is important, compression in certain cases like this might have been important. Here the plate is too thin, there are insufficient cortices engaged with this little thin skinny plate. The fracture wasn't properly reduced so they left a gap. Uh, eventually this became a non-union. Here you can see the plate is broken. I don't know if you can see that. Right, it takes a little bit of an angle. There's this sort of right here, right? See that? There's broken and broken plate. Eventually, it becomes a non-union. Right? Fibula healed. See that? There's the fibula there. There's fibula healed nicely. Left that one alone, it healed. Right? <laughs> Operated on the tibia, it didn't heal. So, um, obviously, not something not done well. So just to recap, these were our objectives, right? To understand the assessment and basic management of fractures, to understand why some fractures do not heal, and to understand the complications and associated injuries that present with fractures. And I hope, I hope these uh, series of uh, lectures and slides um, help you understand all that. Uh, thank you very much.